going on today is Boston butt this is gonna be a little different I'm going back old school I've told y'all before if you follow my channel uh, being in a vinegar based barbecue environment that's how we grew up I'm cooking a couple of butts for Thanksgiving tomorrow of course Janet's got the 20 pound turkey inside she's gonna do that herself in the oven the traditional way since I just did turkey too so today I'm going back and I dug out my little Brink Brinkman turkey smoker and what that's good for is good for cooking these butts on it has no vents on it it's, it's designed kind of like a pit barrel it, the venting is designed in it and I'll show you that in a minute but in South Carolina we cook whole hogs well the old timers do on a pit and they don't use meat uh, they don't use chunks of wood or, or wood that's burning or smoldering that's the difference that's one of the difference they use uh, hickory or either oak usually oak but uh, either will do and so they burn the oak wood down till the red coals are left and then they shovel those red hot coals sprinkle them underneath on the ground if it's an open pit or the little cooker I'm going to use it's got a pan in the bottom I'm going to sprinkle those red hot coals in the bottom and the butts are going to be about 20 inches above that and they're going to cook low and slow and it won't be a, a smoldering wood underneath the heat and the smoldering wood you know the smoke from wood chunks actual wood chunk won't be any of that going on this will be wood that's already been burned down to red hot coal cinders left and when you cook butts over that or a whole hog the total there's a total difference in the flavor profile and then of course the vinegar based sauce and the there's no rub put on this meat up front none I put a little salt on the on the fat cap and so that's what I'm starting with and I'm gonna show you how I do that when I did this the last time a couple of years ago it was the best barbecue pulled pork I've ever done so in my opinion so that's what I got going on today and I'm gonna do it today and then I'm gonna do it next week uh, to take to my sister's birthday party so I'm gonna do this twice this is gonna be my first run at it my first stab at it so stick with me and I'll show you how to do that okay, here's my two eight pound butts one's eight and a half and one's eight and I've already salted them but I'm just putting salt on the fat cap side <clears throat> and that's all that's going on these butts while they cook and they're gonna cook fat side up meat side down just like they do a whole hog in a pit. They put that hog on between two pieces of hog wire and throw that thing meat side down and that's where it stays until the cook's done, until that meat gets done. Then they flip it over and then they start the, the uh, treating the, the meat with the uh, red pepper, black pepper, salt, <clears throat> vinegar, and then any type of barbecue sauce you want to work down in the the meat but i'm telling you if you've never had it like that you, you've really missed something there's my fire pit i'm gonna have me a fire going in there shoveling my red hot coals into this little door once it gets going now to start with you can take this dome and you see there's no vents up here this has a little gap in it all the way around. That is the air vent for the top. That's designed into this thing. All right, there's a couple of uh, couple of grates. One can go down on the bottom, and that one I'm gonna be using to be up here. It puts it about 20 inches above the, the coals. And all you have is a little fire pan in the bottom. And you see the bottom's open. The design is where the venting is around the edge of this thing, My and it works. Used good. to uh, cook hogs, an open pit 
this way. Our Uncle Elvin showed us how to do it, you know, and uh, showed us how to season the hog the old timey way, and it's a good way. Off with some lump charcoal. And we're going to go in with that. I thin that out a little bit. You don't want too much. So you won't overcook and burn anything. I'm going to get set up and I'll come back. I'm going to put this grate on. That's what I'm going to be working on. Give me some thermometers in here. Let me go get the butts. All right. We're going to have a... It'll fill this thing up, that's for sure. I've done it several, a couple of times. Two eight pound butts will fill it up. And of course, they'll shrink down a little bit after they start cooking. So it'll work out just fine. And you just cover it up. And they'll start cooking down. Okay, I got her going. The meat is at 44, put it on at 42, and it, the temperature is 248 inside the pit, so that's where I want to be from 220 to 240, it's still settling down. So that's where we're going to rock for the next six to eight hours. I got the Georgia standing proud today. Look at that. These were made in the foundry where my daddy used to work at something machinery. Long time ago. I've had them for 40 years at least. Anyway, they're good fire dogs. We used to burn wood in the fireplace. I used them. They still come in handy though out here in this fire pit. Hey guys, it's been, I don't know, over an hour and 10 minutes in. Thermostat, uh, the internal is 221 and the meat is 76. So. I'm gonna open this little door and get my little shovel. Punch these coals a little bit and go in and get me a nice shovel full of red oak coals. Go in this door and get a sprinkle them underneath that ham on the other side. Ham butt. Almost the same thing. Get another shovel full Bring them over here and sprinkle them on this side. That's all there is to it. All right, close your door back and you fired it up for another half hour, 40 minutes. Okay, we're set to go thing's been on three hours and 20 minutes. Let's get my lunch off of here. It's ready. All right. Let's make us a, a dog on some bread. Here's the thing you do with that. Just cut it in half. Okay. Just throw that over there like that. We're going to make like a wrap. Then we got some of that vegetable relish down in there. And that's some good stuff there. I, I gotta make some more. Alright. You just wrap that thing up. There you go. Mmm. I wish y'all were here with me. Some of you guys. It's a beautiful day out here. I wish some of you were here gathered around this pit, talking, having a good time. Wash that down. All right, I'm just sitting around waiting, watching this pit, waiting on this yard bus. working late in the afternoon. And all of a sudden, you smell this aroma coming through the air. And you just knew somebody was frying it fish. It kind of reminded me of the fried fish uh, illustration. I was sitting back here and all of a sudden, that aroma from that, the wind caught 
a little draft and blew it over here and the aroma from coming from that little uh, cooker with those butts on it, it smelled exactly like a whole hog cooking over a pit. There's no other smell like it. You can't get that smell out of these other cookers. I'm telling you, <laughs> you just can't. But that smell came in and when you smell that, you know what it means? It means it's working and you're doing it right. That's all it means. Just taking it easy watching this fire burn. My little butts over there. Mm-hmm. Listen to some easy music. You hear that? Yeah, Fleetwood Mac. Been out here with it five and a half hours. We still having fun. I'm gonna show you what it looked like. I just spritzed it. So they're starting to get a little color. Uh -huh. There's all your smoke right there. You don't see that come out of that cooker over there. It's just cooking away with those red coals from that wood fire. It, it makes the biggest difference. No smoke at all. Better than this, does it, Toby? Look at old George as they standing proud. Me and Toby's out here just having a blast. Got plenty of light. Cooker still going. Let's see, what are we at? Oh, 174 internal on the meat. 283, I just stuck the fire. So it gets up there a little bit and then coast back down. <clears throat> Wish you were here. Where do we go? I'm going right here where this barbecue is. <laughs> My little pit has done good today. 11 hours and 49 minutes. I know this is not the best picture, but I mean, that's like softer than, but that's like melted butter. Look at there. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. I mean, no resistance at all. That's what I really wanted. Hold on and let me uh, get my gloves. Hey, everybody. Here we are. 12 hours later. This has been a long day, but it's been a fun day. Let me get these gloves on where I can grab these things and flip them over. Hopefully, it didn't burn it. Mm, yeah, it's stuck a little bit. It's pretty though. That looks like beef instead of pork. It got a little crusty, but that makes really good bark. Okay, first thing <clears throat> that you see Rodney Scott do this has really got a crusty bark. His isn't usually like this. I just, uh, I overfired it some, but this was a, a trial anyway. I'm going to do it again next week, so I'll be learning from this one, from this cook. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little overcooked in certain aspects you just break that open so stuff can get down in there gonna be good all right the next one i do will be even better you put apple cider vinegar on Okay. Next comes our salt. And remember, there was no rub put on here, so 
This looks like you're putting too much, but you're not. Time all this gets mixed up good, it'll be Black just right. pepper. Black it until it's black. And remember, there's a lot of meat here, so it looks like a lot, but time you work all this in, it'll be just fine. Same thing with the red. Now we'll be a little more careful, careful with the red. I don't want to get it too hot, but but you want it, you want to have enough red on it to where you see red. It's time you work all that in with the sauce. Here It'll is be fine. some barbecue sauce I put together, and I'll have it in the description box. It's similar to the Eastern Carolina sauce, but I added a few things. So, we're going to go with this. I'll just put it all in there. And I'm going to use this mop. It'll just be so much easier. So much easier. Slits all in this meat so that sauce is not running off the side. It's going down in there and we'll be putting more on in a little bit as I put it in the pan. that the last time they let it sit on there till the uh, sauce gets to bubbling on a whole hog now on this it'll be a little different but that's what I'm trying to copy or mimic whole hog style cooking in a pit <clears throat> I'm dying to taste a piece if I gouge, gouge it too much it's gonna fall apart on me because it's tender. Once you get past that crusty surface, it's tender as all get out. If this was a whole hog, the cooker, the pit master, would really be going down deep and twisting that. and He'd have it all laying on the skin. Uh, that's the difference. I've got skin, but it's not a a thick, long, full covering mat of skin. It's it's a little sparse, so I have to be careful. You just put your spoon down in there and twist it. And of course, remember those bones are still in there, and that kind of helps hold it together too. I have to be careful when I lift it out of there. I'm gonna taste it. Oh gosh, that pulled off of there like what I'm used to. Look Ooh. at that piece of pulled pork. Now that's, so far, it's just like I remember. And the smell that was coming off of this cooker today smelled like the real deal. I'm gonna try this. It hadn't gotten marinated with the sauce and all the sauces yet, the seasonings. When I get it inside and really work through it, Mm. Mama, I'm coming home. That's the real deal. That's good. That's going to be good. I'm taking that next week to my sister's house. They're going to like this. After I get it inside and I bust it up and I get it done, I'll show it to you. I'll see you in a little bit. Here's my butts. Like I said before, I was a little over aggressive in firing it up. It's fine, but I could do with a little less.
crusty, but it that's going to make some good bark. Well, you see this bone here? It's cooked down. It, it was cooked down like butter. But toss that over there. I didn't get the, uh, I'll leave this crusty part over here. A little too crusty. But I didn't get the uh, fat cap cooked uh cooked down like I wanted to. It just got late and I just needed to bring this to an end. If I'd have been earlier in the day, so I'll take that that cap off of there. This look at this. Just it comes apart. Uh this I tasted it and it has got the taste profile, the flavor profile that I've been looking for since I started this channel. I knew it was here. I, I knew it was. But I just never had gone back to it totally. I had tried to season the barbecue this way, but it just wasn't the same if you don't cook on an open pit uh, setup. And use oak and hickory oak and or hickory and that's the way pit cooked hogs whole hogs are done in south carolina it's a difference you need to try this you know break away from your normal style of cooking and i challenge you to try it this way it it was a 12 hour cook but you get it takes that long if you're gonna cook barbecue uh this way more seasoning and more of this sauce this is a vinegar based sauce that I made. I'll put the recipe uh, down in the description. It's very good. It's close to the Eastern Carolina sauce. I added a, my own little twist to it. I'm thinking it needs a little more pepper, black pepper. Like I said, you think you're messing it up, but it takes a good bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna stick with that. Let's mix this back up. working in the kitchen all day folks we're gonna have a big blowout tomorrow Thanksgiving she's got the refrigerator we got three refrigerators she's got them full of food she's got a 19 pound turkey she'll be putting on in the morning just food everywhere count your blessings right I am so stoked how this barbecue turned out this is the best All I've I made. can say, y'all, is I made the people in South Carolina mighty proud. That's the best pulled pork that we just called barbecue that I have ever made. It tasted like the real deal, close to Scott's barbecue and Stucky. Ooh, I got it seasoned right. I got it cooked right over hot coals, oak and hickory coals in a cooker. And boy, oh boy, was it good. We're going to have fun tomorrow eating this. Y'all have a good. Looks like somebody's getting ready to eat something. Not empty yet. containers. Empty containers. Uh-oh. 19-pound bird. We've got tables set. More Let's tables set. today, Jeff. Oh, well, we're having roast turkey and dressing with giblet gravy and we're having barbecue piff barbecue all right uh, green beans uh, collard greens creamed corn out of our garden cranberry sauce and squash casserole that's on my sides if y'all want it it's a good one it's a special squash casserole is my daughter Rhonda bringing something yeah, Rhonda's bringing some uh, mac and cheese in the crock pot. 
Oh, I've had that before. That's and good. my mom's bringing fruit salad. My sister's bringing chocolate delight, and I've made an ice box coconut cake. Well, so and a neighbor, sounds... a, a, a sweet neighbor that lives behind us, gave us a really good pecan pie. Yeah, we've got to get that recipe. That's delicious. It's great. One of the best I've ever had. And we're gonna have um, yeast rolls. Wow, sounds and like Thanksgiving. Yeah, fixing to happen I think around that's here. It. I think that's pretty much it. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Have a good one. Look here. Barbecue, turkey, half a turkey. We're starting to gather and mingle. Everybody's happy, in a good mood. Everybody's in here ganging up. They saw me get the camera out and they left the other room, so I'm gonna come in here with the camera. And Toby's outside barking, raising food. Of course, yeast rolls, fruit salad, cranberry sauce, green beans, collard greens, dressing, homemade dressing, giblet gravy, cream corn out of the garden. Squash casserole and a little bit of rice. And there is my family on the Janet's side and some of my kids and grandkids. That's enough said. Until next time, Bill and Florence. I hope you enjoy it. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>